Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brennan Bias from Checkit.com and welcome to another Walkthrough Wednesday. Uh, I'm, I was, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to release a tutorial last week. For those of you that didn't get the memo on our Facebook page, um, my computer has been having some issues lately, so I decided to get a new hard drive, reinstall Windows, and basically, you know, re <laughs> reinstall all of those programs that I've been missing. So, uh, we're starting clean here. Everything's all, all nice and, uh, reinstalled and all that, but, uh, Anyway, on to the tutorial. Uh, this week's tutorial is going to be focused on HDR. And I realize that some of you don't really know a whole lot about HDR, which is, you know, kind of why this tutorial is here. And for those of you that are interested in Googling HDR on Google, um, wow, I just said g Googling on Google. That's, that's classy right there. Um, <laughs> Uh, so if you research uh, into HDR, you'll find out that there is a crap ton of information on what it is, how it works, why it's used, and so on and so forth. And really, uh, I, I really don't care for this much information right now. We just want to get the, the general idea down for the tutorial. So uh, let me show you uh, kind of one of the simple things that we can accomplish with HDR with this here. Uh, this example that's already here in Wikipedia. So uh, the overall goal here is to take three or more pictures that are exactly the same, save for the uh, the level of exposure. And for those of you that don't know what exposure is, it basically just represents the um, like the overall brightness of a photo. So basically, this photo over here has a higher exposure than the two over here, or this last picture has a lower exposure than the two over here. Pretty straightforward. So anyway, we'll take these uh, different kinds of pictures and we will merge them together using uh, Photoshop to create an HDR image. And as you can see, um, in these example pictures down here, uh, like in the, in the one with the lowest exposure, you see the sky really nice, but you don't really see the buildings all too well. But then if you bump over a few notches, the sky is a little bit too bright, but you can see the, uh, the buildings just fine. And so the goal here is to essentially get the best of both worlds, where we have this nice, beautiful sky, but we can also see the back, uh, sorry, not the background, but the the city and the buildings all at the same time. And, you know, that's that's kind of like one of those, uh, the first and foremost things that you can use HDR for. But also, you can use HDR to create some really stunning effects. I mean, just look at this HDR image right here. We've got these really crazy details. We've got cool colors all over the place. And of course, uh, since it's HDR, you can see the sky really, really, really nicely. So uh, HDR can be really cool depending on, you know, what it is you're taking pictures of. Uh, unfortunately, the pictures I have were just um, just kind of around uh, my house, so they're not all too terribly interesting. So You'll just have to bear with me on that, all right? <laughs> okay, so to get started with this uh, this project here, I'm going to assume that you've got some kind of HDR photos to work with. If not, I can give you guys a download. Uh, so just look in the description if you want to download some of the pictures that I've taken, and that way you can mess with this yourself. So uh, starting off, we want to uh, you know merge some photos together for this HDR image. So to do that, let's go to File. And we go down to Automate, and you'll see we've got a setting here called Merge to HDR Pro. So we'll just give that a click. And we're going to use uh, some specific files here. So let's browse, and I'm going to select uh, these three images right here. Um, I've got a fourth in there, but it's really not necessary. So we'll just keep it down to three right now, and we'll hit OK. And so there we go. We've got all three pictures loaded in. And we are going to attempt to automatically align the source images just in case I move the camera a little bit while taking the pictures. And let's hit OK. So after a brief moment, depending on how large the pictures are that you're using here and how many of them you're loading into the HDR scene, it will calculate through this all and start combining them into a beautiful HDR image. OK, so maybe not so beautiful at first, but that's why we have all of these nice settings and sliders that we can mess with. So uh, first things first, the mode here is automatically set to 16-bit. 
And, uh, you know, depending on who you are, you might want to keep that just as it is, but odds are that you're going to be converting this into 8-bit eventually anyway. At least I know I am, because I basically save every image as JPEG later on at some point. So I'm just going to bump this down from 16-bit to 8-bit, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Up to you. And then uh, we'll basically just keep this at local adaptation. You can go through and... Uh, you know, try different settings as you please. I'm not going to really go into that. So anyway, let's just start messing with some settings. Um, I'll leave the edge glow by itself for the time being. Uh, first thing I want to mess with is the detail, the exposure, and some of these uh, these advanced settings down here. So let's see what happens when we start bumping up the detail on the image. So uh, you, you can see that when we bump up the detail, we start getting like uh, all of this sharpened uh, feeling to everything. It's as if you just went through and applied a sharpen filter to it. So if you want to kind of uh, dumb down that, that feeling, you can go to the edge glow and put up the radius a little bit. And so that way it kind of uh, softens up some of those, uh, some like highlights and stuff like that. And so that way these details aren't like... Uh, like overly sharp, but in some cases they look kind of cool. Like, uh, like some pictures look really cool with a whole lot of detail. But uh, let's just start kind of messing with some of these settings. Maybe not so much detail. Uh, let's put up the radius on the glow a little bit. Maybe I'll amp up the strength. See what that does. Come on. And so we're starting to get some like uh, some edges going on here. So maybe I'll want to amp up the radius to kind of help that fade a little bit. That's a little uh, overly dramatic, if you ask me. So I'm actually going to put the strength back down, uh, but keep the radius uh, in the 100-point area. And uh, maybe we'll put the detail down a little bit. Maybe uh, toy with the, the gamma. I don't know. You just kind of go back and forth and mess with some settings as you like. Now, down here, uh, you can start messing with these shadows and the highlights individually. So, for example, I like to bring down the shadows a lot because it, it really darkens up some of those uh, those shadowy areas. But maybe not a little, maybe not too much, I guess. And uh, another cool thing that uh, I notice happens in this particular image is when I bring down the highlights, I start getting like all of these details in like the the cement in front of the the house here. And that also brings down the the overall brightness of the sky in the background, which is you know, kind of cool because uh, it kind of uh, makes everything flatter, you know, if that makes any sense. Like, it, it's the sky is no longer overly bright, which is something that happens a lot in photography. And you'll notice that one of the other settings in here are the vibrance and the saturation. So if you have a bunch of cool colors, kind of like in that other photo that you saw earlier, you can bump up the saturation in there and create some really intense coloring or if you want to you can also bump up the vibrance as well but in this particular case that doesn't really look too good so I'll kind of put that back down maybe I'll keep in a little bit of it but um, I'll focus mostly on the saturation but you know if you want to you can always go in the opposite direction and totally take out that uh, that saturation but I'll just go ahead and keep that uh, a little higher up and uh, that's looking pretty, pretty decent here. And uh, actually, uh, you know what? Now that I think about it, if you want to, while you're at it, you can go into the the, uh, the curves menu right here. And by now, I'm assuming most of you are pretty familiar with curves and how it works. But um, it's not something that I like to mess with right here in the HDR settings. Because I can always just go back in later and add in another uh, curves adjustment layer and, you know, do the tweaking there. So I like to just keep that off right then and there. And uh, maybe we'll just mess with these just a little bit more. And uh, let's kind of put down the gamma a little bit. Okay, so let's just say that I like this just as it is. And we'll hit OK. And of course, it'll uh, you know create the the file real quick. And so now, what I want to do is show you guys a bit of a before and an after, kind of using the uh, the the picture that represents the the middle ground for exposure. So let me go back. Let me grab the uh, the picture that's more middle ground exposure wise and drag this on in. 
And let's check mark that. So let's just show you a little bit of a before and an after. So you can see that toggling between these two, there is quite a significant difference. Uh, for one thing, you can see a whole lot more detail in like the, the cement and the road, the car, and even the trees. You'll notice that if I, if I zoom in up here and turn this on and off, you'll notice that before they were kind of faded into the sky, but now they're like very, very prominent. And so you can just see like the, the major difference here. And uh, also, like some of these shadows uh, on the house are, you know, a little bit uh, nicer to look at. And just overall, the, the HDR makes this image, you know, a lot clearer in, you know, one way, shape, or form. So, uh, how about I kind of go the other direction with HDR and show you guys a more artistic way of uh, looking at this stuff? So, Let's uh, once again go to Automate and go to uh, Merge to HDR Pro. And this time I will use these five pictures that I took of the Tahoe that I drive. And uh, just just because uh, I think it's a funny note, I like to call the Tahoe the hoe. I don't know why, but I just think it's kind of funny. I, yeah, let's, uh, let's go put some stuff in the back of the hoe. <laughs> uh, I love it. Awesome stuff. So anyway, this is taking a little bit longer because I've uh, added two more pictures into this uh, this HDR here. But uh, the the purpose of adding in more exposure is, or sorry, not more exposure, but more photos is to have a little bit more uh, control, I guess, to to have better results in the like the darker areas, I suppose. And I don't know, it just it just makes the the ending result just a you know a little bit better depending on, you know, how good the picture is and all that. So let's start making this look really cool. Um, let's amp up the edge glow radius quite a bit and then amp up the strength just to kind of uh, get something interesting going here. I'm not seeing a whole lot going on, so maybe what I'll need to do is amp up the detail. There we go. Check that sucker out. That's getting like car and magazine detail right there. <laughs> And uh, let's maybe bring down some of the highlights because they're kind of overwhelming on uh, on the hood of the 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 what am I the hood of the truck? Goodness gracious, what am I doing with my life? And uh, let's kind of mess with some of these shadows a little bit. Maybe I'll bring the shadows up so that way they're uh, they're not being drowned out by the brightness. And let's uh, let's put up the vibrance a little bit and maybe turn down the saturation to kind of give it like an old worn look. And uh, let's maybe uh, let's put down the gamma just to see if that does anything cool. Okay, that's giving a kind of a cool like uh, contrasting to it. Let's put a little bit more strength on the glow just to see what that does. I'm kind of losing some of the blue colors when I do that. Oh, wow. Talk about a significant difference. Here's the strength all the way up. Here's the strength all the way down. Wow, talk about a difference. So let's kind of put this up a little bit. Let's see what happens if I put the radius down. Ew, that's ugly. Put that back up. How about all the way up? Cool, but I kind of like it a little more towards three quarters of the way up. And uh, let's bring out some of those details a little bit more. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> Uh, maybe we'll bring down the exposure just a notch. Oh, wow. Check that out, guys. So just so I'm not wasting any more time, let's hit OK and create this here HDR file. And come on. You're almost there. So close. Hey, I can kind of see myself in the reflection there when I was taking the picture. That's, that's kind of funny. <laughs> I didn't even notice that before. All right. So let's go ahead and grab... Uh, let's see, I'm thinking this one would be the uh, the neutral exposure there. Come on, you know you want to commit that. Bring it in. Thank you. So let's do it before and after. Holy Hera, is that freaking cool, man? Like I'm I'm telling you guys, if this thing wasn't so like old and dirty, it would be like the front cover of like Chevrolet magazine, if there is one. I don't know. I don't really keep up to date with that kind of stuff. I'm not a huge car fan. I just kind of like looking at them here and there, you know, stuff like that. But uh, so anyway, 
I'm thinking you guys get the general idea here. Uh, sometimes it's uh, it's really cool to uh, mess with some HDR, make some like really cool looking photos and stuff. I mean, you can create some really interesting and unique effects depending on the scene and how many different ex uh, exposure levels you go through, and you know how you tweak the settings. You can create some really cool stuff with this. So. Uh, I hope you guys, uh, you know, learn something cool from this, and maybe you will come up with some kind of really cool HDR photo on your own. And, uh, you know, if you guys like this video, you know, give it a thumbs up, and or leave a comment, one or, the, one or the other, or you can do both, you know, that helps out too. And, uh, again, if you need these photos for experimenting purposes, uh, just look in the description, I'll, you know, I'll leave you guys a, a download link, you know, 100% free, just because I'm cool like that. And I believe that is all I've got for you guys. So uh, I will talk to you guys later and see you next Tuesday.